This podcast is free and it's accessible to everyone thanks to support from listeners like you. If you value this show, please consider supporting its production by donating to our home, KUOW. It only takes a minute to give and you'll be helping to support the production of this podcast. Make a donation at KUOW.org or follow the link in the show notes. And thanks. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. There are some big things in life and in the news these days that can understandably drown out other happenings, including from the world of wildlife conservation. And we're here to help keep some of those things on the radar. July has been a busy month for bears, including a government decision not to restore grizzly bears in the North Cascades here in Washington State. And if you're a regular listener to The Wild, you'll know I've spent a lot of years working for these bears. It's an issue near and dear to my heart. So I wanted to share a short interview I did on the subject with Kim Malcolm. She's the local host of All Things Considered on KUOW in Seattle. Also in the interview, a brighter story of bears, and perhaps the most famous grizzly of all. I hope you enjoy it. Fewer than 10 grizzlies are thought to live in the North Cascades wilderness, and they won't be getting any help from the federal government. Last week, the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt, announced his agency would not move forward with a plan to reintroduce grizzly bears to north-central Washington, citing overwhelming public opposition to the plan. Chris Morgan is here to share his thoughts on the decision. He's a bear ecologist and the host of KUOW's podcast, The Wild. And he's been working on the Grizzly Bear Restoration Project for more than two decades. Chris, thanks for talking with us. Hey, Kim. Nice to be here. Thank you. So you know the North Cascades very well. Tell us, what's the current state of grizzly bears right now in that area? Yeah, it's an amazing place on our doorstep, this 10,000 square miles of, of really wild country. And uh, no matter how wild it is, there's only a few bears there, fewer than 10 grizzly bears left, maybe even two or three of them. So mm. one of the rarest populations, most endangered populations of grizzly bears in, in North America that, that have lived there for 20,000 years and there are significant species to local Native American indigenous people and cultures, and and uh, it's it's their native home here, um, but they're highly threatened. And I know that this is something that you've been working on for years to restore the number, to build up the number of bears in this area. What did you think when you heard the news? In some ways, it's not a surprise um, that these bears are being left behind and abandoned by this current administration that doesn't seem to do very much in terms of environmental protection, to put it mildly. And so grizzly bears have fallen down the list of priorities for them. So it's, it's pretty devastating to hear. But on the other hand, grizzly bear restoration in the North Cascades is very much this roller coaster ride that those of the those of us who have been involved for a lot of years on this and there's a lot of amazing organizations that focus on these grizzlies we're kind of used to that roller coaster ride and uh you know the, the hope is that the endangered species act which protects this handful of grizzly bears will be the one that wins out in the end and and if that's the case the government's obliged to help them Well, let me just refer back to the federal government. Secretary Bernhardt put out a statement and he said, grizzly bears are not in danger of extinction and went on to say that the recovery of grizzly bears in the lower 48 states, he described it as an amazing success story. So my question for you then is if grizzlies are managed with success in other parts of the country, as he says, then why is it important to grow the population here in the North Cascades? First first and foremost, it's their native home, and they've been here for 20,000 years, and they're an integral part of this ecosystem, and they're a part of the Wild West that is, is iconic and that has uh, in some ways been here long before human existence and, and certainly European settlers. And they're a part of the ecosystem. They're a part of the fabric of this this wild western area of North America, and even beyond places like the Rockies, like Yellowstone and Northern Continental, Continental Divide in in in, uh, in Montana. This is a special place. It's the furthest west in the lower 48 where we have grizzlies, even though there's a tiny number of them. So I think it's 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 in our interests as human beings to protect these big wild ecosystems that these umbrella species like grizzly bears help us protect. 
I did want to ask you about a bit of good news that we heard about for conservationists in relation to the grizzlies. Um, A federal appeals court ruled last week that bears in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem will remain on the endangered species list. Tell us why this is significant. Yeah, back to the roller coaster, like you say, Kim. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you get bad news one day last week about the North Cascades and then great news the very next day. And so, you know, it's been on again and off again, protections for Yellowstone grizzly bears over the last decade or more and if they're protected they're safe and if they're unprotected they can be trophy hunted so they've been protected since 1975 under the ESA the Endangered Species Act and then that protection was lifted in 2017 and that that would have allowed them to be trophy hunted and then this was temporarily prevented um, until last week when firm ESA protection was given back to these bears by the Federal Appeals Court. So so there's about 700 grizzly bears that, that are now safe in that 34,000 square miles in parts of Montana and Idaho and Wyoming. And uh, it's it's a huge thing for grizzly bears there and in the lower 48, you know. I mean, we to put it in perspective, we used to have around 50,000 grizzly bears in the lower 48 in historical times. Now there are 2,000. Several hundred of them live over there, but you can see how we have decimated their numbers. So anything we can do to protect even a few hundred bears is huge. So the Yellowstone news was was massive. And I understand there's one Yellowstone bear in particular that's pretty special. Bear 399. What's her story? Yeah, oh, Bear 399. She's so famous, she has her own Facebook page, you know. So <laughs> she she is perhaps the oldest grizzly bear in the wild in the United States, perhaps in, in, in North America. She's 24 years old. Um, she's had many litters of cubs over the years. I've, I've, uh, I understand she's got 22 or so descendants, and she's become very, very famous in this greater Yellowstone ecosystem, and especially Grand Teton National Park. So I've heard even Jane Goodall is a huge fan of Bear 399. So she's this... That's big. She's this, yeah, <laughs> she, yeah, she's made it, right? She's, uh, <laughs> so she's old. She's a successful mum. Her future was looking questionable with this, you know, is she protected, is she not, in Yellowstone and Grand Teton and that greater area there. And um, she emerged this year, and this is the surprising part, as a 24-year-old grizzly with four brand new cubs. And it's just incredibly touching to me to think that she's emerged into the world uh, as of last week now uh, she and her her new cubs are, are protected and it just seems to be the way it should be in a place that's as iconic and wonderful as Yellowstone doesn't it yeah and she is getting famous I uh, I found her on Twitter and I started following her today <laughs> she's at grizzly bear 399 in case anyone's interested I don't know how she taps out her messages with those those <laughs> those uh, she doesn't have a <laughs> posable thumbs or anything but yeah She's been pretty quiet recently, but, you know, like you said, she's had cubs. So um, Yeah, well, the kids are keeping her busy. Yeah, exactly. Chris, you know, this. there's good news, there's bad news in the bear world. What do you take away from these changing stories? Well, you know, one thing is that nothing happens passively in the world of conservation and protecting our planet and grizzly bears and everything that comes with it, you know, whether it's species or places. I think we've all got to keep our eye on the ball when it comes to the protection of these wild places. And, you know, the current administration has not been not been kind to, to environmental laws and wild places and species. And we've just got to be present, you know, as a society, as a community, and knowing that these intact ecosystems or wild places are important for all of us and not just the animals that some people love. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it, we've just got to be mindful of that, I think, every day. Chris Morgan is an ecologist and the host of KUOW's podcast, The Wild. Chris, thanks for doing some bear talk with us. Thanks so much, Kim. And just a note to add here, after last week's federal decision to not reintroduce grizzlies to the North Cascades, Washington Congressman Dan Newhouse cheered the decision, saying homeowners, farmers and small business owners did not want grizzly bears in north central Washington. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Kim Malcolm on KUOW. I just wanted to add that the statement that Congressman Newhouse made doesn't reflect the fact that polls have shown a vast majority of people in Washington state support the return of the grizzly bear to the North Cascades as part of our natural heritage and the ecosystem here and as something important for future generations. 
Of the people who oppose, some are more fearful of government regulations for endangered species than they are the bears themselves. Like so many things in life, it's complicated. And this is not the last we'll be hearing about the return of the grizzly. If you want to hear more about the ups and downs on grizzly bear conservation in the North Cascades, check out the wild episode we did titled Ghost Bears of Washington State. A roller coaster for sure. On the next episode of The Wild, we have something a little different planned. I think you'll like it. I'm Chris Morgan. Thanks for listening.